It's always good stuff to talk about with Coinbase. They really take up a lot of air in the room, don't they? All right. Well, we were initially going to talk about how Coinbase <laughs> signed a deal with Homeland Security uh, as part of their blockchain analytics offering. Uh, by no means is Coinbase a titan in the in the blockchain analytics realm. Really one of the few places where it's not shining of late. But they did sign a Homeland Security contract uh, that was notable for, for, the, uh, for, for the value of about $450,000 per year. Uh, this uh, stems from uh, an acquisition of Neutrino a while ago that ruffled a lot of feathers within the crypto community, uh, given some of those founders past work uh, for a somewhat sus company. So uh, we'll talk about this first, and then we'll get to the other Coinbase news of the day. Uh, I'm going to throw this straight to Naomi. Uh, yeah, big big story here. Uh, Coinbase working with ICE. Uh, what, what do we make of this? Uh, well, you know, I am always the last person in the room to criticize Coinbase because I do consider them a valuable service. And then they go around and stab me in the back by doing stuff like this, you know, <laughs> and I hate it. Uh, the fact that they're inking deals with the Department of Homeland Security for uh, analytics products, I'm not a fan of that at all. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how much more to say about that. And honestly, I think it ties directly into the other story that you're going to bring up. So I'm just going to go ahead and mention it. Coinbase has also just dropped their Lend service. So is it coincidental that the same day that they ink a multi-million dollar deal with one government department, they appease another government department by dropping uh, a product that the SEC was going after? Very interesting timing there, Coinbase. Uh, but Zach, I saw your hand go up. I'll throw it back to you. Yeah, I just want to clarify. I mean, the timing is the timing is interesting, but here's the timing. This was uh, this was announced on an updated blog post from June on Friday. Uh, so it was not announced today. Uh, Friday was also notable because all sorts of shenanigans happened in crypto lending regulation uh, with Celsius, one of the more prominent uh, firms in the space, being hit with three notices from state securities regulators here in the U.S. So. Uh, Coinbase tried to sort of slip this one under the radar, I think, on Friday by updating a June blog post that initially announced the product. We said, hey, we're not doing this anymore. This comes after Gary Gensler apparently issued them with a Wells notice saying, yo, don't do this. And they did not. Um, so I don't know about the uh, the appeasement angle, but um, definitely interesting to see them sort of uh, uh, <laughs> bending to to the will of, uh, of regulators on this one. Uh, I'll toss it to you, Adam, for your uh, initial thoughts on both these things. So, I mean, Coinbase finds itself in a very different position this year, this time this year, than it did this time last year, right? This time last year, they had their former counsel in as the actual regulator who was then making rules that very much affected them. This year, they're finding themselves a bit on the back foot, it looks like. And, you know, uh, I think it is an appeasement thing, but I also kind of can't really hold it against them because, again, they're a big public company at this point. What are they going to do? Challenge the government and be like, hey, you can't do anything to us when clearly they can. They can do lots and lots of things to them. So this seems to me like more so than anything else, it's a question of do you want to be a friend of the status quo or do you want to be an enemy? Coinbase is big enough that they can be a friend and that's what I see this move as. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I don't hold it against them, but I'm definitely saddened by it because there are so many principled people in the crypto space who do take a stand. I mean, Shapeshift is one company that is taking a stand and has con consistently been fighting the government to their detriment to the point where they actually had to dissolve their entire business model out of the principle of, you know, the government should not have the ability to control this. So although I, don't, I definitely don't hold it against Coinbase either, but it definitely doesn't make me sh hold them up as a shining beacon of, uh, of principle in the space either. But Jen, I, I saw your hand go up. Yeah, the fact that Coinbase dropped their land product is, is, seems so anticlimactic to this public fight that seemed to be happening between between them and the SEC. It is it is kind of sad. I just want to point out that they have other government contracts, though, with the Secret Service, the IRS, and the FBI, and now Homeland Security. And there was a Coinbase article, a CoinDesk, sorry, CoinDesk article that from June that reported that Coinbase Analytics has really close ties with Coinbase's product ecosystem. So I wonder what that means for uh, consumer and investor data that's already on the Coinbase platform. I know they say it's completely separate, but just curious. I'll go back. I, I did want to riff on on Adam Singh really quick because I think that is a really interesting point, right? You know, do you do you do you fight or do you or do you comply? And I think um, you know, you look at. Coinbase and the other Coinbase story that we had today was about their uh, prime brokerage offering uh, going 
public to all institutions instead of just being in beta. And in reporting that story, you look at their filing numbers from last quarter, uh, nearly 70% of their trading volumes uh, are from institutions. This is not necessarily uh, a retail-driven business anymore. It may have been early on, but really this is sort of the mainstream gateway that institutions are using to get into the crypto sector. So give, understanding that and understanding that they have the pull position in, that, in, in those terms, you understand why they wouldn't want to necessarily run afoul with federal and state regulators over uh, a retail lending product that may sort of just be ultimately a distraction from where the big bucks are really coming in. So I did want to just kind of home back in on that point from Adam, because I think it is apt. I saw your hand up, Adam, and I'm, I'm Toss it to you. Yeah, uh, and uh, and uh, so I actually want to build on uh, the point that Naomi made, which is uh, kind of comparing Coinbase to Shapeshift, which I think is a really interesting comparison. Uh, Shapeshift, obviously a much smaller company overall, but I think both indicative of different approaches that you can take in this type of an environment. One approach is to fight and wind up basically being pushed out of existence as a company because that is the path that you know that effectively that takes you down. They can still do their business, but it's business in a way that I don't believe anybody in the traditional world of finance would really recognize as a traditional business. Whereas Coinbase has gone the opposite direction. They've taken, you know, and gone down basically every opportunity that they could to become kind of a status quo mainstream financial company. And I think that that's really what we're seeing here is these two dynamics at work.